The ARC A380 is Intel's first discrete graphics card and is now available for purchase. By entering the market, Intel is looking to compete with Nvidia and AMD in the GPU battle. Before you get this new Intel GPU, it would be best for you to know how well they perform. That's why in today's video, we will be taking a look at the features of the ARC A380, as well as its performance, benchmarks, and more. Let's get into it. Features The DG2128 die of the Intel ARC A380 GPU is built on TSMC's N6 manufacturing process. This die is 157 square millimeters and consists of 7.2 billion transistors. The core configuration features 1024 cores operating at speeds of up to 2 GHz, 64 TMUs, and 32 ROPs. Memory-wise, it has 6 GB, 15.5 GB per second, of DDR6 memory installed on a 96-bit wide memory bus, which results in a bandwidth of 186 gigabits per second. This bandwidth is comparable to the entry-level GeForce GTX 1650, which was released all the way back in 2019. All of Intel's Alchemist GPUs support AV1 fixed function hardware encoding, DisplayPort 2.0, DirectX 12 Ultimate, hardware-based ray tracing, and XCSS, which is Intel's version of super sampling based on neutral networks, and is comparable to Nvidia's DLSS. Therefore, at the very least in terms of features, these new ARC GPUs will compete with the current generation of components offered by AMD and Nvidia, However, when it comes to performance, that's an entirely different story. Benchmarks. Now that we've covered the basics, let's talk about what really matters, gaming performance. After all, that is the reason you clicked on this video. Intel's promise is that it will deliver a powerful and affordable video gaming card, but more importantly, it will provide a genuine alternative to the existing market options. Therefore, we are absolutely anticipating something more satisfying. The GPU was put through its paces on a Ryzen 9 5950X GPU test set up by Textbot. The games were evaluated using both 1080p and 1440p resolution, but it will make more sense to focus on the 1080p results because they are more relevant, as you will see in a moment. Let's get into it. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So they discovered that Intel's A380 is not the snappiest of GPUs. It managed 48 frames per second at 1080p with the medium quality preset. This is better than the older GeForce GTX 1050 Ti, but it's 11% slower than the Radeon RX 6400. The fact that it is 9% slower than the RX 570, a graphics card that is already 5 years old and originally sold for just $170, is probably more upsetting than anything else. Despite this, it is possible to play the game, so there is that. It is important to highlight that to avoid being restricted to just 36 frames per second on average, you absolutely need to have rebar enabled, as recommended by Intel. Shadow of the Tomb Raider This one actually had terrible performance, with an average of 42 frames per second at 1080p. Despite using the highest quality settings, the older Radeon RX 570 was capable of 54 frames per second, while the Radeon RX 6400 was capable of 53 frames per second. Watch Dogs Legion See, the results here are a bit more encouraging, although we are still only looking at performance comparable to that of the RX 570 or RX 6400, however a passable experience can be had with an average of 59 frames per second when using medium quality preset, and it is comparable with the Radeon RX 6400. Without rebar, the A380 GPU quickly degrades performance and becomes comparable to the GTX 1050 Ti. Rainbow Six Siege. Performance is acceptable compared to the other games in this genre. In reality, it is quite superior to that being on par with the Radeon RX 6500 XT. It is still not quite up there to compete with the GTX 1650 or RX 570, but 114 frames per second on average while using high quality settings is a solid result. This is a significant improvement over the Radeon RX 6400. Performance can decline by as much as 26% when rebar is not present. Formula 1 2021 The ARC A380 is once again capable of performing on par with that of the RX 6400. This is acceptable considering the anticipated price and the performance is highly playable even when utilizing the highest quality settings. Naturally, rebar is required once more, and without it the game was completely unplayable with frame rates as low as 1%, which was barely 22 frames per second. Horizon Zero Dawn. In Horizon Zero Dawn, we are looking at performance comparable to that of the Radeon RX 570 and RX 6400. With an average frame rate approximately of 50 FPS, not terrible but without rebar, the A380 is even slower than the GTX 1050 Ti. This means it will be necessary to have it as our testing has shown once again. Far Cry 6. 
it's quite unimpressible with only 52 frames per second on average. This is lower than the GeForce GTX 1650 and on par with the Radeon RX 6400 when limited to PCIe 3.0. However, it is 22% slower than the 6400 when using PCIe 4.0 and is 22% slower than the old RX 570, which is definitely not a good sign. Do me turn. Performance was satisfactory clocking in at 56 frames per second at 1080p with the ultra quality option on. This represents an 8% improvement over the Radeon RX 6400, but a 10% decrease over the RX 570. However, it is possible to play the game, which is a plus for the A380. Resident Evil Village Regarding the frame rates in Resident Evil Village, the A380 performed admirably. With an average of 68 frames per second, it was somewhat faster than a GTX 1650, but it lagged behind significantly more compared to the RX 570. After disabling rebar, the average frame rate still appears to be acceptable, typically 58 frames per second, would be quite enjoyable, but the 1% lows were terrible, resulting in a choppy gaming experience. Death Strand the results of Death Stranding Benchmark are particularly troubling because the A380 is 13% slower than the Radeon RX 6400 and 15% slower than the RX 570, while being on par with the already disappointing GTX 1650. Hitman 3 Hitman 3 is another difficult game for the RK380, which only achieves performance comparable to that of the GTX 1650 and is consequently slower than the Radeon RX 570 and the RX 6400. Naturally, 58 frames per second on average, with a 1% low of 53 frames per second, is playable, so there is that. But the 1% lows decrease to 26 frames per second without rebar, and that's atrocious. Cyberpunk We were shocked to find that the A380 performed so well on Cyberpunk compared to the other components such as the Radeon 6400 and the RX 570, both of which were defeated by a 16% margin when rebar is enabled, of course. Unfortunately, a gaming experience that averages 44 frames per second at 1080p when utilizing the medium quality preset is at best unsatisfactory. Yet compared to other cheap graphics card, it is adequate. Power consumption. Even while the Intel Arc A380 uses a reasonable amount of power, it is not nearly up to the required standards. During earlier gaming tests performed by TechSpot, the system's total power consumption was increased to 233 watts, which is somewhat higher than the GTX 1650 Super, a GPU that was, on average, slightly more than 40% quicker in their tests. In a perfect world, the A380 would be positioned below the RX 6400, but in practice, this distinction won't matter for the mass majority of gamers because the ARC graphics card will function adequately with low-end budget power supplies. Overall, the ARC A380 is just one of those cards that's really difficult to evaluate. It's new, it's from Intel, someone who doesn't really release a lot of GPUs, and unfortunately the Nvidia GPUs and the AMD GPUs both dominate in all aspects. Now you can pick and choose here and there with a couple games, some games may be better than others, but unfortunately overall this card is just a no-go and I would not recommend any of you buy it. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment down below any other video ideas we will see in the future. And we thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Hope you guys have a blessed day, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace out.